Welcome back everyone. In this video, we're going to be adding a sign up and sign in page to our Phoenix application. Luckily, Phoenix provides a generator that can do all of this in one command. Inside of our project directory, we can run mix phoenix.gen.auth. After pressing enter, you'll get an error message. I'll usually just rerun the command using the for example snippet because it makes sense in most scenarios. To explain this a bit more, accounts, the first argument, is what's known as the context name. You can think of this like a folder that can contain many schemas. The next argument, user, with a capital U, is going to be the schema name. And lastly is the table name for our users. Notice how it's pluralized? This is by convention. Once we run the command, we'll be asked if we want to use live views for this new authentication system. We press Y for yes. And once it's finished, we need to run some commands. The first one is going to install the new package dependencies. And next, mix ecto.migrate is going to migrate our database, which will update our database with the tables we need for this step. If you're on macOS, I recommend you install Postico. We can connect to our database and browse the tables like so to verify that everything's created properly. And in this case, we have two new tables, so it looks like we're good. If we head back to the terminal and use mix phoenix.server, and then if we head back to the browser, in the top right, we have a register and login button. By clicking on one, we get redirected to a page that's been automatically generated for us. And that's about all we need for our job board authentication. I encourage you to create an account and try signing in and see what happens. Also check post to code and see what happens inside of your database as well. Next, let's review some of the code that was generated for us. First, let's take a look at the accounts context. Inside of here is the user schema. Schemas can be thought of as the glue between Elixir and our database. All that's important to know here is that we're defining a bunch of fields that belong to the user's table. Next, let's take a look at accounts.ex. This contains a bunch of helper functions for interacting with our database. All of these functions are going to be related to accounts somehow because they're within the accounts context. Now let's look at those live views that were created for us. A good place to start would be user login live.ex. Inside of here, there's a lot we could talk about, but the important things for now is that each live view has a render function and a mount function. Let's now take a look at our router. The generator added a bunch of paths for us for our live views. If you look closely, you'll notice that some of these paths are blocked by authentication. You can read more about that in userauth.ex. This module is very well documented, and after reading it, you'll get a sense of how you're supposed to use these functions within the router. Next, let's take a look at the migration. Within the private folder, there's a repo folder. Inside of there, we have a timestamped migration. If we open it, we can see the instructions to set up our Postgres database. This may seem redundant at first, since we already have a schema, but I promise it will make more sense with time. Whenever we want to change our database, we'll create a new migration that creates the new columns or whatever else it needs. In this case, it's just creating the users and users tokens tables and a few other things. 